arginine is the basicity queen. You're almost always going to find it be positively charged. There are three amino acids that you can find sometimes be positively charged. These are arginine, histidine, and lysine. And of these three, arginine is the most basic. And the basic refers to in its neutral form, it's able to act as a base and steal a proton. And you're almost always going to find that it's already acted as a base, already stolen a proton, and now is in its positively charged state. This is more true for arginine than for the other amino acids because when arginine steals that proton, it gets to do something called electron delocalization or resonance, where it's able to share electrons among multiple atoms, in this case among like three different nitrogens in its side chain. And this makes it really, really happy, and it can only be this happy if it has that proton. And so it's going to be really hard to steal that proton. You're going to have to get to really extreme pHs when there's barely any protons around before you can actually get it to give up a proton. So we say it has a really high pKa value. We'll get much more into this, what this means. The pKa value is going to be higher than that for lysine, which is higher than that for histidine. So lysine and histidine are the other two amino acids that are like the basic amino acids. And these don't um, these aren't as basic as arginine. So lysine might look a lot like arginine, but it doesn't get that resonant stabilization, so it's going to be easier to deprotonate. And with histidine, it actually, most of the time, it's in its deprotonated form um, because you kind of have the ring of histidine. Its aromaticity is kind of drawing electrons away from the proton, making it easier to pull off. And so histidine is able to go back and forth between protonated and deprotonated most easily. Lysine, you're almost always going to find it protonated, but it can be deprotonated and thus act as a nucleophile or on this. But arginine, almost always going to be positively charged because it really likes that resonance. And so let's step back and talk about what this resonance means as well as compare these different amino acids um, and really why, why they act so differently and how they can do different things. So arginine is able to spread out this positive charge. It is able to do this through resonance and resonance makes molecules really, really happy. They like being able to share electrons with multiple things. Um, and so this is going to be really stable and really, really happy. And it can only happen when you have it in this protonated form. In its deep protonated form, you don't get that equal resonance. You don't get that equal sharing between all of these different nitrogens. Um, I don't have, I'm trying to make a graphic for myself, but I found this great um, resource I'll link to, where basically you can see that in the neutral form, if you were to push the electrons around, you could get, you could draw resonance structures, but in these resonance structures, they're not very stable. You have a full positive charge on one thing and a full negative charge on the other thing. You have the separation of charges. This is not very stable. But in the case of where you have the protonated form, now each of these three resonance structures is basically equivalent where you're having this charge evenly spread out. You're having these electrons evenly spread out. You're going to have this stable form Whereas here you would have just like not very stable. Um, so you don't have this resonance st stabilization that you get when you have that protonated form. And since molecules really, really like having resonance stabilization, they're really going to want to be in this protonated form. And they're not going to want you to take off a proton and ruin that resonance. And so it's going to be really, really hard to deprotonate arginine. And if it's really, really hard to deprotonate something, this means that you're going to have to get to a really, really high, really, really um, high pH in order to deprotonate it. So this means that you're going to have a very, very high pKa. And so the pKa is going to be the value at which half of it is protonated and half of it is deprotonated. So the higher the pKa, the more the harder it is to deprotonate something, the more what we call basic it is, the more likely it is to have taken a proton rather than to give up a proton. And so the pH is going to be a measure of the free proton availability. So how many protons are there available out there? And if there's a lot of protons available out there, then there's going it's going to be easier to bump into one and to take one. But if there's going to be not very many protons available, then it's going to be harder to bump into one. And even if you really, really want one, there's going to be fewer opportunities to take one. But in the case of arginine, it really, really wants one. And so even if there's not that many protons available, it's still going to take one. 
And so how do we describe if there's not, what do we say when there's not very many protons available? Well, we say that the solution is going to be more basic or more alkaline, and it's going to have a higher pH. And so pH is an inverse scale. And so in inverse log scale, so basically the higher the pH, the fewer protons there are ever available. And if there's fewer protons available, you're going to have to really, really want that proton in order to, to have a proton. And so with the case of arginine, it really, really wants that proton. So it's still going to be protonated even at, even at those high pHs. And so the pKa is going to be the value at which half of it is going to be deprotonated and half of it is going to be protonated. And in the case of arginine, we're going to see we have a pKa of about 12.5. And this is going to be way above the pH of our bodies, where our pH in our bodies is about like 7.4 or so. We're going to be about five units above, our pKa is going to be about five units above that. So in our bodies, we're going to be way below the pKa of arginine. And if we're way below the pKa of arginine, this means that we've got way more protons available for arginine than it would need for like half of it to be protonated. And so we're for e, e, five might not seem like that much, but for each of these changes in the un, each unit change in the pH is going to be a tenfold difference in the in the avail, amount of protons. And so if we look at the pH and we look at the pKa and we compare them, pH is going to be way below the pKa of arginine. So we're going to be kind of like we have more protons available than we would need in order for, or for half of it to be protonated. And we have so much above it, and it's not even on the scale, you would have about 100,000 fold more of the protonated form than the deprotonated form in the case of arginine. And this is because you have that resonance stabilization thanks to um, have it in the protonated form, but not in the deprotonated form. And so the protonated form is going to be a lot more happy. You're going to be a lot more likely to find it in this protonated form. Now, how does this compare to the other amino acids that, are, that have this property of being able to be, act as a base? So this would be lysine and histidine. So in the naming, it's the, we name it as what the neutral form can do. And so the neutral form can act as a base, take a proton, become positively charged. And so this is histidine, lysine, and arginine that can do this. Now, if we look at lysine, it looks pretty similar to arginine, right? But lysine is a much, has a lower pKa. Okay, well, only two different, right? But that's a hundredfold difference, remember? And why is this? It's because lysine is not able to share those, those it's not able to share it, spread out the charge. And if it can't spread out the charge, it's not going to be as stable. And so arginine is going to be a lot more stable in its protonated form compared to lysine. So lysine is still going to be more likely to be protonated because remember the pKa here is going to be above the pH in our bodies, which means that there's going to be more protons available um, than it like needs in order for it to be mostly protonated. So in our bodies, we're going to be below the pH, um, below the pKa. And if you're at a lower pH, there's going to be more protons available. And so if there are more protons available, or it's more likely to be protonated. And so we're going to find lysine more likely to be protonated in our body, as well as arginine. These are both more likely to be protonated than deprotonated in our bodies. But arginine is going to be um, a lot more stable in its protonated form, which means that you, it's going to be harder to deprotonate this. It's going to be possible to deprotonate lysine. And in fact, this is, happens often in different enzymes and the active sites of enzymes. Well, basically, you can get differences in the local pH or the low and, the, and like the local pKa can vary. So this pKa value is basically for the free floating amino acids, but in the context of a protein, this pKa can actually be really different. And this is going to allow you to say, deprotonate a lysine. And this can allow you to do cool things like have the lysine act as a nucleophile and you can get it modified with um, methylation and acetylation and stuff. And you can form these cool bonds, all these various things that you can do with the deprotonated form of lysine. But with arginine, you're not going to get to deprotonate it because this is going to be so stable in this protonated form. And so although these have the, although these have different um, pKa's that are both way above the pK, the pH of our bodies, meaning that you're most likely to find them, there's almost always more protons available than they would need in order to be mostly protonated. 
So it might not seem like, okay, well, does it matter that there's a difference in the PKA? Yes, it matters because that depend that influences how hard it is. It tells you about how hard it is to actually remove a proton. And so even though the free floating form around that's like hanging out in your cells might be mostly positive most of the time, that doesn't mean that you can't remove a proton if the situation is right. Say if there's a, maybe there's an aspartate or a glutamate nearby that can yank off a proton, that can happen without lysine, make, giving you a lone pair that can be reactive. But that's not going to happen with an arginine. Because you have this much higher PKA, it's going to be much harder to pull off a proton. And so arginine, although you find both of these in these basic forms, lysine you can also deprotonate, whereas arginine you're not going to deprotonate it in your bodies typically. Okay, well, what about histidine? Now, histidine is interesting because histidine is going to have actually a pKa that's going to be below the pH in our bodies. And so if we look to our chart, we can see that in our bodies, we're going to be above the pH, above, we're going to be at a pH above the pKa. And if we're above the pKa, well, this means that there's going to be fewer protons available than it would need to be protonated most of the time. And so we're actually going to find it deprotonated most of the time. And about 90% of it is going to be deprotonated. And but this, so this is going to leave you with significant amounts in both the protonated and the deprotonated forms. And this deprotonated form, similarly to what we saw with lysine, it's going to have a lone pair that's going to be able to be reactive. And so why does lysine have some such a lower P PKA than these other amino acids? Well, looking at um, at histidine, you can see that histidine is going to have resonance. It's going to have resonance between these lone pairs in their protonated forms. This is going to help stabilize it, similarly to how what we saw with arginine, but not nearly as much. The main resonance in histidine is actually coming through this ring. So this ring contains this aromat. This is an aromatic ring. So the electrons are actually shared throughout all of these atoms in the ring. And this sharing of electrons, it kind of drains the electrons. And so this, and this aromaticity is going to be present whether or not you're protonated. And so this, this resonance is going to be drawing the electrons like into the ring kind of, and kind of draining these nitrogens, making it harder for them to hold on to the protons that they have. And this is going to make it easier to deprotonate it. It's going to make these, proton, these, these groups more acidic, so easier to donate a proton from. So it's going to be easier to deprotonate one of these, even easier than it was to deprotonate a lysine. And both of those are going to be way, way easier than it is for an arginine. And so arginine, you're almost always going to find it in that positively charged state. And although this is going to prevent it from doing things like acting as a nucleophile, it can still play important roles, such as by forming salt bridges, so basically ionic bonds where you have a a charge charge attraction between different molecules it can form these ionic bonds between different um between like an arginine and an aspartate or a glutamate or between an arginine and another molecule such as dna so dna has a negatively charged backbone and so you'll often find arginine um hanging out with dna so to repeat arginine lysine and histidine are the three basic amino acids, meaning that their neutral form can act as a base, take a proton, and when they do this, they become ionized, they become charged. In this case, they become cationic, so they become positively charged. Arginine, you're almost always going to find it positively charged, meaning that it's already acted as a base and now is in its conjugate acid form. Arginine really, really likes being in this positively charged form because it means that it can do this like electron delocalization. It can spread out that charge and it can share electrons among three different nitrogens, so it's really happy. If something's really happy, it's not going to want to change, so it's not going to want you to deprotonate it. So it's almost always going to be protonated. Lysine, it, it is almost always going to be protonated as well, but it's possible to deprotonate it with help, typically with like the help of an enzyme where you have something next to it that's kind of like helping draw away that proton or something like that. So lysine can get deprotonated and this can serve important functions, allowing lysine to act as like a nucleophile to um, help you do things like methylation, get, allow it to get methylated and acetylated and to form shift bases and all this cool stuff I talked about in my lysine post. And all that can happen because you can take a proton from lysine unlike with arginine. But 
with histidine, well histidine, it can go back and forth between protonated and deprotonated more easily. And so you'll often see it in both forms in the body and in biochemical reactions, sometimes even in enzymes, serving to help speed up or catalyze reactions by giving and taking protons, sometimes with cool like ping pong mechanisms. So histidine's going back and forth. Lysine's almost always positive, but you can pull off that proton and then allow a lysine to serve as an important nucleophile. What with arginine, you're almost always going to find it positively charged. Don't expect to be able to pull off a proton because it likes that resonance. So that is why arginine is the basicity queen um, and hope that helped.